But they didn't smarten up until after they'd ruined a man's foot one day. They never paid much attention to carrying a rail before that, but lack of coordination made the task difficult and dangerous. They were all stepping on a rail instead of over it. One man slipped and another man was caught. They all wised up after that, but it didn't make the injured man feel any better. He did a stretch on crutches. Found out they're not much of a substitute for healthy legs and feet. If you like to get around on your own two feet, give them the protection they deserve. Look at him gripe. Yesterday, he scoffed at safety shoes. Give your feet the right kind of protection and you get a different answer. He can still smile. Safety shoes are a lot easier on the feet than the plaster shoes the hospital puts out. There's nothing spectacular about shoes. They're pretty common. But did you ever stop to think that every type of shoe is designed for some specific job? Shoes for baseball, tennis, bowling, golf, football, field boots, ski boots, dress shoes and walking shoes. Shoes of every description and every one of them built to function better than any other on some one particular kind of work. There's a shoe designed for you, too. A shoe designed for your needs on your work. The safety shoe, the best foot insurance a section man can get, or any man who works with heavy material. That strong steel toe cap is a few ounces of prevention worth months or even a lifetime of cure. Ask the cripple who never wore them. Or ask the man who might have been a cripple. He was wearing them when he needed them. Safety shoes look like any other shoe. They wear and bend like any other shoe. But you really notice a difference when you put your foot in the wrong place at the wrong time. Your feet are no more important than your hands. Avoid injury by knowing the right thing to do at the right time. Don't be a man who's long on brawn and short on brains. A rupture is hard to laugh off. Get help to lift heavy, hard to handle materials. These men aren't weak. They're playing it safe. Be smart with your strength and you'll be stronger longer. A foreman's most important duty and responsibility is the protection of his men. Don't hesitate to send out flagmen whenever the need arises, and send them out far enough to flag the heaviest and fastest trains. A gang concentrating on its work must be protected from train movements at all times. A good flagman will go a mile or more before sending his torpedoes and taking up his post. Constant vigilance is a prime safety factor. The lie of the land, the nature of the work being done, the weather and visibility. All these govern how many flagmen or special lookouts are needed and where they should be stationed to provide ample protection from approaching traffic. Failing to protect his gang is the worst mistake a foreman can make. These men are working at the mouth of a tunnel deep in a canyon around a blind curve on mainline track where traffic is heavy. The foreman is forced by close clearances to place a track jack inside the rail. That definitely calls for a flag. And the flagman, who should have been on the job before all the rest, hasn't even started yet. A half hour too late, the foreman checks the time. Suddenly, a diesel horn stabs the air. The foreman yells a warning, shouts orders in all directions. The flagman charges up the track, flagging wildly. The jack is stuck. It can derail the train. Frantically, they try to free it. The train can't stop. At the last moment, the jack comes out and they dive for safety only a moment before the engine thunders by. That foreman jeopardized his men, endangered a train, its crew, and cargo, all because he didn't know, didn't care, or didn't think. 
Thumbing through the records of railroaders who went west before their time, you find that many of them actually committed suicide. Inattention, negligence, common carelessness were the instruments of death. Here's one straight from the record. A slide fence is a precarious place to work while a train is passing. The rule of safety is to climb down to the ground and get clear of the fence and track when a train approaches. This man knew that rule. For some reason known only to him, he broke it. The roar of that train is the voice of doom. Get down, man. Get down. At the crucial moment, he can't get loose. He freezes from fright, faints, and the engine wallops him over the head. Death climbed that pole and tagged him out. Every safety rule grows out of tragedy and grim experience. The very existence of the rule is proof that men were maimed or died because they didn't have that rule to go by. Never forget that. Some of you knew that man. Some of you didn't. The important thing to remember is that what happened to him can happen to you. Whenever you break a rule born of another man's misfortune, you're asking for it, begging for the same treatment he got. Whether you repair fences or swing a pick or buck a barco tamper or do any of a thousand jobs, it can happen to you if you don't know and practice the safety precautions that experience has dictated for that particular job. Today, only one man gets hurt for every 10 men who got it 20 years ago. That means you're heading in the right direction. But the one man who gets it today He's not going to feel any better about it. And his family is not going to find any consolation either when they go looking for a casket. Scaffolds and ladders have played the villain in many a B&B &B disaster. They're not dangerous if you take a few simple precautions. A ladder not properly blocked and braced can let a man down with a jolt and a few broken bones. To prevent that, block the bottom securely in place so it can't slip. Brace both sides and fasten it at the top. Then it can't slide. When going up, coming down, or working on a ladder, always face the ladder. In any other position, you're bound to be off balance. A man who carries tools and materials up a ladder is almost as stupid as the foreman who tells him or allows him to do it. With one arm loaded, your balance is bad. A board or tool getting tangled in the ladder can tip you off in a nasty fall. You endanger anyone working below you. Sooner or later, someone gets hurt. To avoid accidents and make things easier on yourself, use a hand line to raise or lower all tools and materials. A good safe scaffold has plenty of planking and guardrails to prevent falls. If any question arises, put on another board. You can't go wrong on that. Test every plank and guardrail before you put it on the scaffold. A board that can't take this treatment should never leave the ground. When you put the board on, use plenty of nails. They're cheaper than accidents, so fasten it securely. Perhaps the importance of that guardrail never occurred to you. 
In that case, take a lesson from what happened to this man. It never occurred to him either until that crucial moment when his wrench slipped and he slipped with it. He was out cold and pretty well broken up when the men got to him. He didn't die, but for months after that, he had nothing to do except lie flat on his back and think about the guardrail that wasn't there. Making it twice as tough was the realization that he had no one but himself to blame for the shape he was in. What's the value of an eye? Yes, priceless. Protect your eyes at all costs. They're delicate and irreplaceable. Twenty-four hours a day, your own safety is your own responsibility. But on the job, the foreman is equally responsible. When he calls you about those goggles hanging uselessly around your neck, when he makes you put them on, he's not batting his gums just to be bossy. He's doing you a good turn, reminding you before you suffer the consequences of your own neglect. Protect your eyes every instant, and you'll never need a seeing eye dog. Whenever you get a notion that those goggles are a nuisance, or that your foreman's harping about eye protection is a lot of baloney, think of yourself in this fellow's shoes. Would you rather wear goggles or pedal brooms? It's all up to you. Sometimes there's a wise guy in the crowd. Nobody can tell him anything. No goggles, just looking for trouble. And didn't see it when it came. That's all it takes to lose an eye. How would you like to go through this operation three or four times a day for the rest of your life? Not pleasant to think about, is it? And it can happen to you, too. Every moment that you work with your goggles hanging around your neck or in your pocket, when they should be protecting your eyes, you're pushing your luck, asking for what this man got. Yes, it can happen to you. You can buy new eyes. They may make you look better, but they can't see for you. Those eyes you have right now, the ones that are looking at this motion picture. You can't get any more like them. You don't want to live out your life in blind darkness, behind glassy artificial eyes, so use your goggles every moment you need them. You men of maintenance play leading roles in the mighty drama of railroading. Whenever a train rolls by, you can take justifiable pride in your splendid accomplishment. That's why you work, why you build strength and safety into the track. So gleaming strands of steel can carry a nation's commerce, linking man with man in common purpose, moving America. You watch those trains with interest and satisfaction, too, because that traffic is your bread and butter. You build safety into that track and take reasonable pride in doing it. You can build that same safety into your life and habits. There's no need to take the risks and suffer the grief you've witnessed in this picture. Thousands of railroaders don't. After a day's work well done and safely done, you can head for home whole and healthy. Many a foreman brings his gang home safely day after day and year after year. Common sense and safety go together like ham and eggs. Carelessness and negligence eventually land you in the hospital or the morgue, and you're a long time dead. You don't want to be planted prematurely. So be wise, be safe, and be here tomorrow. Just use your head, man. Use your head.